Hey everyone, and welcome to To the Library, Research Tips for Writers. I am so glad to be here for Stay Inside Con. Trust me, as soon as all the other conventions started canceling, I got really, really anxious. But luckily, we have this beautiful digital format that allows you to see and hear me while I run through this panel. So, research tips for writers. Welcome, and I'm glad to have you all here. Greetings, writers. My name is Aichi Yume. I am a writer, avid reader, and occasional very smart cookie. I am a research fellow and alumna of St. Mary's University, um, double major in English communication arts. I am also a professional writer of six years and a fan fiction and fandom writer as of the last too many to count. Let's just say that I've been in this space for a while, shall we? Today we're here to talk about research methodology and tips for writers, which is a little bit different than research methodology for, let's say, your classroom or studies, or even just research methodology if you were going into maybe a harder science, so like biology or anything like that. I do tend to find that most writers are naturally pretty curious. Why else would we write? However, because of that curiosity, we do tend to get a little bit sometimes overwhelmed with research and research material. And in all honesty, it can be quite daunting. So I'm here to hopefully provide you all with some tips that will ease some of that uh, burden and some of that load. So what are we doing here? Well, I'm here to tell you, like many, writing can be hard and being a writer sometimes is hard. But my goal is to, as mentioned before, hopefully take some of that burden off of you guys and give you some of the tips and tricks that have helped me be as successful as I've been over the last few years. Let's go over a few of the ways that you can better research your upcoming or current writing projects, and then what you can do with all of the research material that you've collected. So tip one, let's go to the library. Now, I understand that currently libraries are closed, but many of them offer a great deal of their collections online. And if that is the case for your local library, as it is here in San Antonio, take advantage of that. Take advantage of as much online material as you can from your local library, whether that's old census data, articles, maps, whatever. Definitely, definitely, definitely take advantage of all of that good library material. It's there for a reason, and it is enormously beneficial sometimes, especially if you need something that's kind of niche or location-specific. So if I need a old map of San Antonio, one of the first places I'm probably going is to the Central Library, let's be honest. Um, and even just different branches, different libraries have different things and different resources. You would be shocked the things that you can get from your local library. Some have access to 3D printers. Some have access to really, really cool equipment and to stuff. So I would definitely say, when available, support your local library. That's hashtag not sponsored, but I think it's important to keep in mind. Tip two, don't be a little afraid to get crazy. Now, searching can be very, very targeted. If you're looking for recipes about what to do about fudge, you Google fudge recipes. Sometimes in that linear desire, though, we overlook things, and maybe you miss a really cool recipe on ambrosia or something like that. So don't be afraid to get a little bit weird when it comes to your searching. It's called semantic search when you're doing, or tangential search when you're sort of looking around all the other search topics that you're looking for. But don't be afraid to do that. We all have gone down Wikipedia rabbit holes. I know I have. They're a blast. And sometimes, even if it might not look initially interesting, it might be interesting or beneficial to you later on. So if you have the time and it allows and you have the emotional ability to do so, because trust, there are days where I there's just too much information in this brain. Don't be afraid to get a little bit crazy. Don't be afraid to go down that rabbit hole and learn a lot about serial killers or something like that. That can be really, really fun sometimes. Tip three, do not fear scholarly research. Scholarly research gets a bad reputation for being inaccessible and hard to deal with. It can be a little bit unyieldy and a little bit difficult to understand. I think the key is is just diving in and seeing what you can do. Um, Google Books actually has a decent amount of scholarly research available, as well as like the Gutenberg Press. And 
uh, JSTOR, which is great. It took me a while to get used to scholarly research uh, when I entered university, but once I kind of got the knack for it and understanding annotated bibliographies and understanding all different other kinds of portions like abstracts and such, you just figure it out. And what I love about scholarly research is how specific it gets. And I love that specificity when it comes to like, you'll get those really, really long specific titles. And even now, like in the books that I read, the longer and more specific the title of book, I love it. So if I could have like Roman emperors during the Julio-Claudian era, as opposed to just Rome, I'm way more interested in narrowing that stuff down. And that's where scholarly research is great. Don't be afraid to take a break. That's tip four. Now, I understand if you're on a deadline or if you have a paper due or if you just feel like you need to cross over that finish line. I get that and I respect that. However, it is important to take a break. Um, I know that these current times are a little bit hard. However, move away from the computer. Put the book down. Go do something else that kind of allows your brain that few minutes to decompress and to turn off that will be monumentally helpful for you. So the ways that I decompress, video games, fan fiction, talking to friends, walking around in my apartment, I play a lot of just dance. Those are all ways that I decompress and get away from my writing. And even if I'm on deadline, I do try to give myself a few moments where I'm not thinking about the work. Sometimes that's just going outside onto the patio and talking to my cactus, which is not a euphemism. But I do think it's important to take a break. I know that writers, we tend to be a bit of a sit and stay bunch, but sometimes that's not always the most productive thing to do. And if you feel bad about taking a break, don't give yourself too long. A break doesn't mean that you're done. Give yourself 15 minutes to an hour, see what you can do in that time, and come back refreshed. Six, find an organization style that works for you. Unfortunately, when it comes to this, I don't have the answers for you. You have to find that on your own. I know at least for me, I respond well to post-it notes, bookmarks, highlighting. Uh, I like folders. I like subfolders. I like keeping things in Google Drive and in Google Docs. I know that works for me. If that does not work for you, then you have to find the system that works for you. Because I think the big thing that happens with research is that it can overwhelm you. And I don't want that to happen because then you don't have access to the material that you've worked so hard to find. Seven, don't be afraid to consult an expert. The internet is a wonderful system of tubes that allows us to look at cats 24 seven. So that means if you are writing something that is outside of your subject matter, take some time to read interviews, to maybe talk to a friend who this is closer to, or to just really spend some time in that space. So if you are a cishet person who really wants to write a queer narrative, spend some time maybe in queer discord spaces. If you have a friend who is queer, spend some time talking to them. I think it's important that if you're going to write something that is outside of your bubble, that you spend time becoming an expert and research is a great way to do that. Now, if you are wishing to interview people, don't be surprised if sometimes you get a no. I think it's all about intentionality and respect. Just say, hello, I am working on a project and I would like to interview you about your experience. Or if it's a closer friend or maybe a friend of a friend, say, I would like to discuss your experience as a insert what you're re researching here and then just be honest. And then when, if and when you do get that interview opportunity, just listen and be engaged and take good notes of Recorders are great for that, little uh, voice recorders. You can download an app on your phone. I just showed my age so hard because I know when I took my journalism class, we all had these little uh, voice recorders that we had to have for journalism. God, I'm old sometimes. Tip eight, don't let tabs overwhelm you. I like searching online, but uh, sometimes the tabs can get a little much for me. Uh, as mentioned before, folders are great. Uh, if you can color code your folders, do that. If you have certain pages that you need to keep in mind too, bookmarks are wonderful. But at the end of the day, I try to close out my tabs. Otherwise, uh, that list will perpetually grow until Chrome crashes. So try to peer, uh, periodically clear out your uh, tabs and your bookmarks as you stop working on things. 
There are some pages for me that stay bookmarked, but we'll get to those in a minute. Tip nine, the internet can be useful sometimes. Uh, the internet is a device full of distractions, which means that sometimes research for a project means that I am looking at anime. Uh, it just depends. I think that is sort of on you to know how much attention you can give to your project and also not be online and what your mileage is on distractions. That's why I try to, if I'm researching for some, for let's say a professional task, I try to do as much of that offline as possible so I'm not as tempted. Now if I'm researching something maybe for fan fiction and I have no choice, well, I try to stay in my sandbox, but that takes willpower, and willpower is not something that I'm big on, hence why I'm sitting here in a blonde wig. Tip 10. If you're working from someone else's source material, become an expert of that source material. As a fan fiction writer, this is the one that I think is one of the most important. You must know the source material if you are going to play in that sandbox. There is nothing like reading a fan fiction from someone who clearly has not really delved into the work. Now, I'm willing to give leniency for taking characters out of character for the sake of plot or AUs or divergences, but at the same time, regardless of that, I think it's important to have a strong rooting in the source material before you do that. If you're going to write about Harry Potter, you need to understand that entire world. And trust me, I know that can be difficult. It's going to take time, and it's going to take effort, and it's going to take studying things that you really consider to be distractions as code, as canon. And that's hard to do sometimes, like studying Harry Potter, or studying Bleach, or studying Death Note, which I had to do for cosplay. That's not easy to do, but to really be accurate and to give credit to the work, I think it's important to do so. So where does this writer get their research on? I'm going to give you a few of the places that I like finding uh, some of my research, which includes an aside to a question that I actually get a lot is how do I name my characters? So when it comes to naming characters, I like to try to let my characters name themselves as much as possible, which does sound very schizophrenic, I understand that, but um. I've used a myriad of resources for character naming, including language dictionaries. Um, I have a book of flower language and flower magic that I've actually used to name a character. Um, Celtic dictionaries, I've used Japanese dictionaries, Latin dictionaries, I've used spell books, I've used mythology books, I've used a bunch of things to name my character. I also use like baby naming websites which always confuses my browser because they're just convinced that I'm like pregnant or something and that is not true. Um, let's go over a few places that I get my research material. JSTOR, as mentioned, is great for your scholarly research as well as Gutenberg Press and Google Books. Uh, I co-host a podcast with a friend of mine called Unfortunately Required Reading, which is about literature, and I will use Google Books actually a lot for that. Um, places where books are sold. I understand that this is a pandemic, but books are still being sold places, so whether that's Kindle or your local bookstore that's maybe doing drive-through delivery or pickups, do that. Um, the internet in moderation, as mentioned, the internet is great, but it's also a machine full of distractions. Talking with other writers and subject experts. I think one of the best things about writers is when we talk to each other and when we communicate. I think that's incredibly beneficial and helpful, so don't be afraid to talk to other writers. And if you need a sounding board or something like that, feel free to let me know, and I am happy to help whenever I can. Now, this is where I get old. Character guides, series guides, art books, and I'm going to go ahead and throw in character and drama CDs. So this goes back to that fan fiction note about knowing the source material. There is so much information that is in character guides and art books and in drama CDs that you will never get in the main series. So I think it's very, very important that if you're working with fan fiction that you get as much of the source material as you can. There's a lot of stuff out there, so when you can get your hands on it, do it. I also like author interviews um, when it relates to the work. Not just necessarily like how they're feeling, but like sometimes I'll throw in like a cool tidbit of like, oh, well, this is where this was supposed to go. It's like, cool. I would never have known that without you. Um, and as for mentioned, uh, dictionaries, language guides, and thesauruses, those are all great. Um, you should have multiples of all of those, just because I said so. We'll pause for some questions here. But normally, if you've been to one of my panels, 
I give you guys recommended reading, but today we're going to do something a little bit differently. If you will hold your phones to the screen, there is a QR code, and in this QR code is a link to some of my favorite research material. I am sharing this with you as an opportunity to peek inside of the mind of one researcher, and I hope that you enjoy what you find. So I'll be in comments answering questions, as well as available to answer any questions that you may have. These are all the places that you can find me, and I certainly do hope that this was informative, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Keep writing.